Okay, we're going to talk about uh, physical and chemical changes. So physical changes are things like um, phase changes and changes in shape. So if you take a look uh, right here, right? Uh, that is a shape change, you're squishing it. Over here is a shape change, someone's cut that kinetic sand. And then here in the middle, there is a state change, right? The water is turning into a gas from a liquid. Okay, physical changes do not alter the composition of anything. They just are those state and shape changes. Chemical changes, though, are also called chemical reactions. And these are elements, uh, how elements and compounds react to form new substances. Your intensive properties will change and your extensive properties might change. So remember the extensive properties are things like mass, um, length, width, intensive properties are things like color, uh, density, and those change because now instead of having a pure substance or, or a specific compound, you have something new at the end. And so keywords to look for when you're trying to identify chemical change are things like exploding, oxidizing, uh, ferment, decompose, uh, rust, burn, rot, right? And so if you look here on the far left, um, this particular example, is um, something that is decomposing, right? So it's some sort of a, a blue blue liquid, or a, I'm sorry, a blue solid and a clear liquid, and it's turning into a blue liquid, okay? And it's releasing a bunch of bubbles. Here in the middle, of course, burning is a chemical change. You're taking a fuel and you're turning it into heat, light, oxygen, and water. And then on the right-hand side is an example of decomposition. This uh, squash, for whatever reason, didn't make it, and so now it's decomposing. So let's take a deeper look at chemical reactions. Chemical reactions in its most simple form can be described as a starting substance or substances becoming new substances. Uh, so we use technical terms for that, and that's reactants for the starting pro uh, substance and products for the new substance. Okay. So whenever we talk about reactants, we're talking about whatever you start with. And when we talk about products, it's whatever you're going to end up with. So all chemical reactions follow the law of conservation of mass. And that just states that the mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products. And the technical wording for the law is that mass is conserved in a chemical reaction. It is neither created nor destroyed. Now, this is something you're definitely going to want to make sure is in your notes, word for word, um, because this is something that you'll see not just on my test, but also on standardized tests. And they'll want the word for word. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of the law of conservation of mass. For example, if you have 10 grams of mercury to oxide and it's converted to liquid mercury and oxygen by heating it up, if the mass of the liquid mercury is 9.26 grams, what is the mass of the oxygen that's released? So let's take a look at this. Hopefully my pen works. All right, so our knowns are that we have 10 grams of mercury to oxide and that we have 9.26 grams after that's been heated up of liquid mercury. What we don't know is the mass and grams of oxygen. Okay, but we do know our law of conservation of mass and that says the mass of the reactants or whatever you start with must equal the mass of the products. Okay, since we started with this 10 grams of mercury 2 oxide, that's going to be our reactant. So we know that we have 10 grams here. Okay, and it says that it was converted to liquid mercury and oxygen. So if the mass of the liquid mercury is 9.26, that is a mass of a product. 
what is the mass of the oxygen gas? And so since they have to be equal, we know we're going to add these up. And our, we can just use x to represent our unknown mass. And so now this looks like a really basic algebra equation, right? Um, so anytime you are trying to get x by itself, you just get rid of the numbers. So we're going to subtract 9.26 from both sides. Okay. And uh, let's see. 9, 9, 10, so that's 4, 7, so 0.74 grams is x. So now we know that since x is representing our grams of oxygen, we have 0.74 grams of that oxygen. So what I want you guys to do now is go practice your physical and chemical change identification. And then there's a, a second uh, worksheet that is going to have you do just a couple of example problems uh, on, on the mass um, law of conservation of mass. All right, see you guys at the next stop.